Hi everybody, this is Rahul with the Alternative Investors Hangout, and today we have here Box Day of WND, and he is the author of the book, The Return of the Great Depression. Hey Vox, how are you? Oh, I'm doing well. Thanks for coming on. Sure. All right, the first thing I wanted to get into is the argument of inflation versus deflation. I believe that we agree on many issues, but I know for sure that we'd probably disagree on this topic. Mm -hmm. So why do you believe that we're going to face a deflationary depression? Because I believe that the amount of uh, credit-created money, which is stored up in notional derivatives and loans and all that sort of thing, are going to decline faster then the central banks of the world are able, able to create money through the banks and push them out into the system. All right. So what about, let's say, the U.S. dollar then? We have guys like Peter Schiff saying that the dollar is pretty much garbage. And since we have artificially low interest rates, a huge debt, and we have a huge trade account deficit, that will cause a run on the dollar. Why don't you agree with that? Because Peter Schiff has a very amateurish understanding of the technical economic aspects of inflation as they relate to an actual debt-based currency. I was on his show, and you know I, I like Peter. I have a lot of respect for him. Um, but when it comes to some of the more detailed and technical aspects of economics, he really doesn't know what he's talking about. And which is fine, you know, he doesn't claim to be an economist, he's an investor, and, and he's a good one. But, you know, if you look at the amount of money, everyone talks about, well, they're, they're printing money, they're printing money, you know, look at, look at M2. And it's true, you know, M2 has increased, you know, relatively significantly over the past 18 months or so. However, that's only part of the equation. You know, the, the very... The unsophisticated way to look at the inflation-deflation question is to erroneously assume that money is paper and that the central bank can print paper or, or you know, the slightly more sophisticated will say, well, it's all electronics, so the Fed, Fed just has to flip a switch and so forth. But what money actually is, and this has been known for a long, long time, uh, you can find it in Mises, is that money is the combination of paper money and bank credit. You know, uh, when you buy something, do you always have to give them a piece of paper? No. Of course not. How are you paying for it? You're paying for it with credit. Yeah, you know, that is, that's an invented currency, but it trades, it's completely fungible, it, you know, it's almost completely fungible with paper currency. And, and with the bank, you know, the electronic bank money and so forth. And if you look at that data, what you can see very clearly that for the past uh, three and a half years, the total amount of, of uh, credit market debt outstanding has remained completely flat at 56, no, sorry, 53 trillion. So what we've seen is that M2 has increased a little bit, but that's only around $9 trillion. You know, The amount of M2 money supply is absolutely dwarfed by the amount of outstanding bank credit. And that amount, um, if it was increasing at its 50-year historical rate of about 8.8% a year, would mean that we would have uh, Z1, as it's called, of about $72 trillion. We don't. It's still stuck at $53 trillion. And what that means is we are seeing an active form of deflation. And the only reason that that is not entirely visible to everyone is that most of the deflation is being hidden off the books in the financial institutions. All right. So what do you think about gold then? We have all these libertarians saying that gold's going to go to as high as $10,000 an ounce because we're going to probably go back on some sort of gold standard. What's your take on that? My take is that gold is much better as a protector uh, of the store of value, as a wealth protector or safeguard, 
than it is as an investment qua investment. You know, people tend to think of gold in terms of, you know, it's good in inflation and bad in deflation and so forth. And that's simply not true. You know, we had inflation. You know. You okay? Hello? Okay, yeah, yeah, we just had a buzzing. You can edit that out. Um, we had inflation throughout the 1980s, you know, at the same time that we had plunging gold prices. And now we've been seeing deflation. You know, even the inflationistas admit that there was deflation in 2007, 2008. And yet gold prices were rocketing upward. And so, you know, gold is... In some ways, you know, for those who, who consider gold true money, then they they should be viewing it as uh, anything that makes gold more valuable is deflation. And so I think that gold is a good investment regardless of whether you – or not investment, but is a good safeguard of wealth regardless of whether you – decide to you know, whether you believe in the inflation scenario or the deflation scenario because if a, if a currency goes away Hello? You there? Yeah, um, I'm just getting a bad buzzing in my headset for some reason. No idea why. Anyhow, if uh, whether you believe in inflation or deflation, gold is still going to to hold its value. You know, because a currency can disappear in either a in a inflationary scenario because it becomes worthless or in a deflationary scenario because the financial system collapses due to all the debts that can't be paid. Right. Okay, switching topics here. Let's look at Europe. What's your take on what's going to happen here? Do you believe that we will see the European countries go back to their original currencies like the Greeks going back to the drachmas, or do you see a Eurotarp situation? Well, I think that they're going to try the Eurotarp, and it's going to fail, and that the Euro is going to break apart. I've been saying that the Euro and the European Union are going to break apart for almost 10 years now. So I am completely and absolutely unsurprised uh, by the, the travails of the, of the Euro. And the only thing that surprises me about the Euro is that it's still valued at about 130 against the dollar when, you know, two and a half, three years ago, it was down around 115. Um, and, and, you know, realistically, it should be, it should be below the 88 cents that it used to be back in 2000. So then why do you think it's that high? Is it because they're running trade account surpluses or what? Well, I think it's because the Federal Reserve is, is sending, you know, hundreds of, billions of dollars over there to prop it up. All right. Just one more last question that I have for you. How do you think the U.S. is going to get out of this depression? Krugman always talks about World War II getting out of the last depression. Do you think that we're going to have, let's say, World War III to bail us out, or do you think we're going to have a Reagan-like candidate to get us out of this mess? Well, first of all, let me say that uh, – Krugman has no freaking clue what he's talking about. <laughs> he's, an, he's an absolute ignoramus on this matter. You know, I before I even got into economics, I was very into military history, and you know, my my grandfather uh, fought in World War II in the in the South Pacific. He was a Marine, mm -hmm. and the, what got the U.S. out of the Depression was not World War II. It was the fact that the rest of the industrialized world had its infrastructure, the infrastructure blown to pieces. And the United States was the only country that had a uh, functional industrial infrastructure. And therefore we had about you know, 10 years where we not only got to sell them uh, consumer goods, but we got to sell them the capital goods that they rebuilt their infrastructure with. And so it's, uh, you know, it's just not – it's not even worth discussing. You know, World War III is not going to get us out of a depression, whether it – you know, even if it came to pass, because World War II didn't. So what do you think is going to get us out of this mess then? Collapse. I mean, the, the 
what's most likely going to happen is that the financial system is going to collapse and uh hopefully you know the the societal system will will hold up i mean you know currency what people don't tend to forget is that currencies have a life of about 70 years you know and and so it's 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 not the end of the world it's not armageddon just because you know the euro dies or the you know the, i mean this is not even the first you know attempt at a european monetary union there've been at least five that i can think of and you know this one's going to collapse too the dollar's going to collapse eventually um this always happens but uh so what what's what's going to happen is this one collapse and then they're going to have to put it back to you think that the SDR is going to be the world's reserve currency then? It's hard to say. I mean, I I wouldn't think so. And yet, you know, what else is there? Uh, you know, the, the central banks are absolutely allergic to a gold standard for the obvious reason that uh, they can't run their credit boom game very easily on a, on a gold standard. I mean, they can still do it, but they can't do it to the same extent. Um you know, gold is not a magical cure-all. You know, we had a depression on a gold standard. We had many problems with it, too. Um, it's much better. Don't get me wrong. I'm all for it. But uh, it, it isn't some sort of magical panacea that is going to you know, usher us all into a, a period of unending prosperity. At the end of the day, you still have to make stuff that people want and sell it to them. That's what wealth comes from. And so, you know, the whole idea that we can play little games with money and that sort of thing and somehow uh, live off that is, it's just absurd. You know, it's just the, it's all that is, is it's the hangover from, you know, 40 years of, of, of a very, very large credit boom. And since we've had such a long credit boom, the, the eventual credit bust is going to be a, a right. All right. Thanks for joining us, Vox. So, how can people follow you? I know that you have a blog and a column on WND, correct? Yeah, there's a Monday column on WND. I've been writing that for about ten years, and then uh, on the daily side, there's a blog, uh, voxdata.blogspot.com, and you know, quite a few people come by and uh, leave comments and and tell me that I'm wrong and that sort of thing. It's all, it's all good. Alrighty. Thank you for joining us. Thanks very much.